It's been a long road for the Zulu people to crown their new king, King Miso Zulu Gazwelitini. Internal family disputes, rumors of foul play and legal action have complicated who was to take over after the deaths of King Goodwill Zulitini and then the regent, Queen Manfombi Lamini Zulu. But the history of the royal family is a complicated one, and succession has never been straightforward. Let's take a look. In 1816, a young warrior called Shaga Gasenzangakona became the paramount chief of the small Zulu clan. Under his leadership, the clan's power began to spread. More local tribes came under Shaga's control and the Zulu army became the dominant force in the region. In 1828, he was assassinated by two of his half-brothers. One of them, Dingan, succeeded him. But in 1838, his army suffered a bloody defeat at the hands of the white Afrikaner settlers. This led to instability and allowed Mbande to claim the throne from his brother. In 1873, his eldest son, Gadrayo, inherited it but only after winning a brutal civil war against his half-brother Mbuyazi. By now, the British Empire had spread across the region. Fearing Gajwayo and his army, they invaded Zululand in 1879. The Zulus were initially successful in the conflict, but were eventually ground down and their capital at Ondini was captured and burned. Gajwayo became a prisoner of the British, but later returned home to continue ruling. The last few years of his life saw continued conflict amongst the rival Zulu factions. In 1884, after Gadrayo's death, his son Dino Zulu ascended to the throne. But it was a difficult time. The civil war continued and only ended after Dino Zulu offered land to neighboring Afrikaners in exchange for their military support. In 1890, he was imprisoned by the British and spent seven years on the island St. Helena, the same place that Napoleon had spent the last years of his life. A few years later, the Zulus rose up against the British in the so-called Bambata Rebellion. The uprising was crushed and Dinu Zulu was imprisoned once again. Dinu Zulu died in 1913 and his son Solomon Mapuzana became king. In conjunction with the African National Congress, he founded the Ingata movement that campaigned against the racist policies of South Africa's apartheid government. There was a 15-year gap between him dying in 1933 and his son Cyprian Beguzulu taking over the throne in 1948 following a long legal struggle. When Cyprian Beguzulu died in 1968, his son Goodwill Zulitini was named as his successor. He wasn't officially crowned until 1971, after being forced to spend three years in hiding due to death threats. His reign was a complicated one, and he was forced to walk a tight rope between the politics of the apartheid government, the African National Congress and the Ingata Freedom Party, the political party of his own uncle, Mangosutu Ptelezi. King Zwelitini was the longest reigning Zulu monarch having spent nearly 50 years on the throne by the time he died. The new king, King Miso Zulu Gazwelitini, whose name can be loosely translated as Unite the Zulus, was born in 1974 and has spent time studying international relations in the United States. After a series of legal battles, he's finally taking his place in the pantheon of Zulu kings.